Hey guys, Loot Wizard here with another Solo Forge video on Gems of War, and yes, I do have audio for this video. I checked it, double checked it. I have audio, so I'm not making that mistake uh, again <laughs> this time. So uh, yeah, let's get right into it. Let's go to the Soul Forge, check that out, and then we'll head over to the event that's going on for the Soul Forge. Uh, checking out weapons first, we have the uh, Tome of Karakoth. Which I don't really think is that great. It removes all purple gems. It deals 33 damage to an enemy boosted by gems removed. And the boost ratio isn't even 1 to 1. It's a 3 to 1. So a third of those gems removed will uh, be added to the damage. And then to make matters worse, removing gems does really nothing to generate mana for you. Unless you get some kind of cascade that falls and connects. Uh, but uh, it doesn't destroy and it doesn't... Um, explode so those are the two other forms of the of the weapons generally due to, to gems on the board to generate mana for you this doesn't uh but then it says here if the enemy is uh from karakoth it'll deal a double damage so that's really the only decent thing about this weapon other than that i don't think it's good i wouldn't recommend spending uh the diamonds even though it's relatively cheap with diamonds i wouldn't still spend the 75 on it uh we have the doomed cauldron which is um one of those weapons uh, from the Doomed event that gives you life to all allies and that sort of thing. Um, I don't really think, it, I don't have a high opinion of these particular weapons because there's other ways that you can generate uh, uh, life uh, and give life to your allies with other troops like Divinia. And there are other ones as well that uh, do that very well. So it's like why use your hero class? to uh, give all your allies life and it's a very uh, mana expensive weapon at 18 mana cost and it's only one color so it's going to be much harder to power that up uh, and then you're taking away uh, a damage weapon from your hero so I would much rather use my hero for damage type weapons so I don't recommend uh, crafting this either 900 diamonds is a steep cost for a weapon that really isn't going to be much better than something like Divinia we have Staff of the Other Worlds. Uh, this is one of those weapons that's specific to the kingdom. Uh, it generates mana based on how many allies from that kingdom you have in your team. And then Infernal Volge um, is another one of those mana generating weapons, except it's for demons instead of for a, a kingdom type of ally. So I don't really recommend any weapons this week. Uh, for troops, we're going to just go through the summoning stones real quick because you never know. Sometimes there is a good uh, troop that pops up in here uh, that uh, is kind of harder to get. And you might want to try to get it. Uh, Rowan is a, an excellent troop, but you're going to get that in your quest. If, However, if you opened a lot of keys and you don't have enough of uh, uh, copies of this troop to ascend it to Legendary or Mythic... Now might be a good time to get a bunch of extra copies of it so you can ascend it to Mythic like I have here. Um, moving on to red. Uh, nothing there. Yellow. Nope. Purple. Nah. Brown. Nope, so we can, uh, I can safely say that the only thing out of here that I'd recommend trying to get extra copies of is the uh, Rowan troop here in green. Moving on to uh, the legendaries and mythics here, and they're all kind of randomized in here, so uh, you're already seeing a lot of the mythics, but let's cover some of the legendaries first. We got Saguaro, we got Teloka, King Avlorn, and Frostfeather. Frostfeather actually does do um, quite a bit. Of uh, things here, it does, deals damage to all enemies, and then if there is an ice storm, curse all enemies. So really, uh, curse is great because it uh, allows you to do a lot of things to troops that uh, bypasses their immunities. So that is a great uh, negative status effect. But uh, other than that, it's not really that amazing of a troop, but it does uh, offer you a curse uh, as long as there is an ice storm going, and then damage to all. Um, enemies there king avalorn is a great troop if you don't have it yet and you uh but it's only really great i think in combination with a uh like troops like the arachnian weaver or yao and there are uh, a few elf troops that are worth putting in with this uh troop here because this will allow them to all start with 50 percent mana and then on top of that it does do damage to all enemies and then it will summon a forest of thorns troop if there is an empty spot for it Teleka is not a troop I use very often. 
It does rely on a storm in order to deal triple damage, but even then it's scatter damage. Uh, but it does have lightning bolt in its traits. It will deal 10 damage to a random enemy on four or five matches. So you're definitely going to want to have a storm going uh, if you're going to use that troop. So Quarrel is, uh, you know, really not that great of a legendary card. Uh, it's probably best used at lower levels, uh, simply because uh, gaining 10 life and attack can be very useful at lower levels when you're only at level like 100, 200, 300, somewhere in that range. Uh, this troop will be best used at that lower level. So in order of like the usefulness out of these legendaries, I would say that uh, King Avlorn is probably at the top here for usefulness out of these four legendaries, then uh, Frostfeather. Telica, and then Saguaro. Now, um, as always, I don't recommend crafting legendaries because they are much easier to get in keys uh, than, uh, you know, spending the 800 diamonds here. Yeah, I would just keep saving up your diamonds and get a really good mythic troop. And talking about mythics, let's move on to those. We have Pharaoh's Ra in the Forge this week. This is a troop that is amazing at giving you extra souls. Uh, and it's important that you trade this. If you do get it, the Necro Master, it will gain 150% bonus souls from battle. Uh, it also does a great deal of damage once you get the souls up there because it will uh, it, it deal damage to an enemy boosted by its souls, which is a one-to-one -one ratio. So the maximum that you can get with the uh, Pharos Ra in your team, I believe, is somewhere around 200 souls. Um, uh at the top of your scoreboard that doesn't mean you're not gonna that's not the maximum souls that you can get with this troop once the battle ends once the battle ends you can get more than that but at the top of the scoreboard 200 souls is about the maximum you can get with one of these in your team and uh so that means that the damage if once you get to that 200 point it's going to be uh you know a 200 extra damage so this really is a, a great like damage troop as well um so that's something to, uh, it, it's, it's not just four souls, like you can do a significant amount of damage with it, is my point. So that right there, if you have been waiting for it, you've been saving up for it, uh, now is the time to get Pharaoh's Raw so you can get those uh, souls going. Um, and we also have uh, the Wild Queen here, which is a, still a S tier class uh, mythic troop in my opinion. Uh, it does amazing at, in a lot of situations. The only thing that can really shut down the Wild Queen is Entangle because it does not have immunity to that. So this troop is probably best used with some kind of support troop that offers cleanse. But it will steal up to 34 attack from an enemy and give it to the first ally. Creates a mix of 22 skulls and green gems. Since it uses green, it can fill itself back up. And... Uh, the traits don't really matter for its power, so it is also an excellent troop for even lower level players that don't have an ability to quickly trait the entire troop. Uh, it is an elemental and a wild folk, so there are legendary troops for both of those to make this start with 50% mana. Uh, and I would recommend the elemental legendary, the Miragi Queen, because that troop... Uh, will convert all green gems into doom skulls and as you can see here uh, it will create green gems and a mixture of skulls regular skulls but you're going to have that uh, already in the mix so miraji queen is a great uh, troop to use with this one uh, moving on here we have stone hammer which is one of the best defensive troops in the game uh, it has one of the highest reduction uh, to skull damage out of all the troops in the game is also immune to death mark and devour and poison disease and immune to stun. So uh, being immune to stun, the only the only way that you could stun this troop is if you cursed it first, uh, and that takes a little bit of uh, you know having the right troops to do that. Otherwise, since it's immune to stun, would, that means that you're not going to be able to stun it and remove this 80% uh, damage reduction to skulls. So you're, it is a pretty safe defensive troop, and then on top of its strong defense. Uh, it will also stun enemies, uh, and then it will create a mix of 22 red and brown gems, and then it gains life on top of that. So it's a very strong defensive troop and a uh, mana generator of sorts. So um, now I don't usually recommend uh, crafting defense, uh, strong defensive mythic troops before crafting the strong offensive troops, because I believe offense is always going to be uh, better in your team than defense. Defense, uh, you know, if you have too much of it, 
it's very hard to win battles if all you have is defense. So you do need to focus on probably, in my opinion, it's probably like two thirds offense and uh, possibly one one third defense. Sometimes you don't even need defense uh, if your offense is strong enough, but uh, that's just the way that I think about it. Uh, the last uh, mythic troop here is Mother of Darkness, and this is kind of an odd troop. It's not horrible, but it's not great either. It does do true damage to an enemy uh, and the enemy below them, boosted by purple gems, and the boost ratio is 1 to 1, so you're going to get a little extra true damage from that. However, uh, you know, as much as I love true damage, this is just kind of an odd troop because uh, it's only going to be doing damage, true damage to one troop that you select, and then there's a troop below that. So there are situations where um, you might not be able to do the true damage to two enemies because if the whole entire enemy a team has stealthy except for one troop you're only going to be able to hit that one troop and if that one troop is at the very bottom of the team then that's the only troop that's going to take the true damage and you're you're uh, you're going to miss out on some damage uh the secondary thing to this is if the enemy dies it will create 12 purple gems otherwise summon two sisters of shadows uh the summon is nice but uh, the mana generation only works if an enemy dies, and it also it doesn't take purple, so it's not generating mana for itself. So this this troop really does need to rely on some kind of other troop that uses purple in order to benefit from the mana generation uh, that's offered by this troop. Um, you know, inflict bleed on all enemies when matching four or more gems. That's okay, uh, but it's still it's it's not bleed. Still isn't something that I rely on a lot. Uh, I'm kind of hoping in the future that they do release some kind of troops that uh, inflict lethal damage to troops that are bleeding, because that would make troops like Mother of Darkness uh, and a few other troops in the game uh, that use the bleed mechanic incredibly useful. Uh, but uh, I don't know if that'll ever happen. That's just my hope for future. So as far as like the order in which I would craft these, if you absolutely need souls, because souls are, if you're still lower level and... Uh, you need souls to level up your troops to uh, to empower them, but it also increases uh, the power of your kingdoms when you uh, power up more and more troops from those kingdoms. So Ferris Ra, especially early on, is very, very good. Uh, and I would suggest doing crafting Ferris Ra over the Wild Queen probably early on. Just because of that fact, you're going to receive more benefits in the long run if you craft Ferris Ra earlier than later. Because if you're already like level 1000 or over, you probably won't get as much use out of Pharaoh's Ra at that point. Um, but uh, other than that, I would say Wild Queen takes the... Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm, I think I'm just going to say that uh, the Pharaoh's Ra and the Wild Queen are tied this week for me as far as like... Because it's based on your situation, I think, uh, which one you should craft if you don't have either one of these. But uh, I would say these two are probably tied this week for which you should craft. Stonehammer, I'm going to say, is more useful at this point than the Mother of Darkness. Uh, so Stonehammer is going to go above that. So I would say Ferris Rod and Wild Queen tied, Stonehammer next, and then the Mother of Darkness in the last spot. So that's pretty much my opinion there on uh, what to craft and what I think about that stuff this week. Not much else going on, I don't think, this week, except uh, we do have this world event here. Uh, before I get into that, let's check out the uh, the event kingdom. It's Karakoth this week, and so if you're going to try to get any troops from your event keys, that is the kingdom that uh, all of that's going to happen with. So let me go find Karakoth here, and we'll see what, uh, what tr kind of troops are in here. So we have Vash, Vash Dagon is the mythic troop for this kingdom. Zolgoth is also a mythic, but there's absolutely no way you can get that from keys. You have to save up power orbs to craft that. As far as legendary troops, we have Abaroth and Medea. Um, other than that, there's a couple of useful troops in this kingdom, but not much is really, uh, really great here. I would say uh, Dark Troll is a great troop. Green Slime can be useful. Um... Wall of Tentacles is kind of a defensive troop, but other than that, there really isn't that many great troops in this kingdom. So I would say save your event keys. Vash Dagon isn't worth it. Aberroth and Medea are not worth trying to get at all. Uh, so I would save all of your event keys this week. Uh, it's going to be interesting trying to make a team out of this uh, for this event. So here we go. We got another one of these world events. Yay. I'm so excited uh, for these events. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I just really haven't found these events to be uh, really that fun. 
honestly, I kind of miss uh, raid bosses and uh, the siege tower events. Uh, we're not even getting the doom events anymore, you know. Um, I always kind of liked raid boss the best for some reason. Um, but, uh, you know, now, like, every single week, it's just the same. <laughs> it's just... Excuse me there, I just had an itch on my nose and knocked my microphone all over the place. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to be too negative, but I don't know. These events don't excite me a whole lot. I'm just like, oh, yay, another one of these. Uh, another one of these. So, let's see here. We have uh, more of these. we got to get another metal here. I don't know if it's boosting skull damage or spell damage or both. Uh, but let's just grab a few tiers here. Token of Summoning. We get our first badge, we grab the next tier, and we got another badge, and we'll grab another tier, and that should give us a medal. Well, let's go check out what it does. Medal of Summoning. So I bought up through tier uh, four in order to get a medal. So I got to go out of all of this. Let's go in here and select Metal of Summoning. So it's going to do 160% spell damage for all troops in the current event. So that's uh, it's all spell damage for this event. And let's see what kind of troops they're going to give us. So we are uh, troop restrictions. We're restricted to Mage, Warlock. Mana color is purple. Okay. Uh, might be a little better than I thought because I was thinking this was going to be, uh, terrible to try to make a team out of this because I thought all we were going to have is Karakoth troops, but I'm glad they expanded that a little bit, uh, because <laughs> otherwise it's like, what troops do you use from Karakoth? Like, okay, so now, yeah, okay, this is a little better, a little better. Oh, yeah, there's Sunbirds in here. That's always something that can be used, uh... As far as like mythics available, I have Arachnean Weaver, Death, Alamogram, Infernus, Obsidius, Skadi, Suna, the Grey King, the Possessed King, Will of Nisha, Xanathos, Yasmin's Chosen. Um, or so we also have some storm options. I have Skadi, or I could use the Ryza, which uh, creates a madness storm of blue and purple. Uh, so I might do some of that. Of course, we got the Possessed King for great, uh, like, lots of explosions and good stuff there. Uh, and remember, we're going to be doing 160% uh, spell damage. Uh, I can throw a weapon in here. Let me see what we got. There's Fiend Fire. Um, I really kind of want a mana generator in there, though. Uh, well, we could use a Reflection of Good as our mana generator and then just rely on the Sunbird and the Possessed King to do damage initially. I mean... I. Initially, we're going to be doing uh, okay, no matter what we use, as long as it's uh, damage to all type, because um, I'm just going to select Arch Magus here, because uh, extra purple is good for what we're doing. We'll do double purple here and a blue, because we got this Madness Storm going on and all that good stuff. Uh, so we'll just start with this, but uh, there's really a lot of team combinations, actually, that we can use for this event this week. Um, so that's good. I was kind of a little bit afraid they were going to just restrict it to Karakoth, and it wouldn't be that fun if that's what they were going to do. So, yeah. I was thinking I was going to say something, then I totally forgot what it was, uh, unfortunately. I hate it when that happens. Yeah, the Sunbird, like, uh, it's going to be doing a lot of damage here because 160% uh, extra spell damage. Um, but yeah, as a mana generator, uh, I'm going to be using the uh, Reflection of Good in this team. But I'm going to do a couple of battles with this, and then we'll go and check out, see if there's any uh, troops that we can use as good mana generators. But honestly, uh, for the first early couple of battles here, I'm not even going to need any mana generation because everything's dying with basically the first cast because we have the Potion of Enchantment, the Potion of Explosion, um, and we're using the, the Metal, which gives us 160% spell damage. Uh, so I don't really need much uh, going on here. Sunbird's going to kill everything one shot for quite a, quite a while, probably. Level 35. 
Let's see if uh, the Sunbird can kill everything here in one hit. Yeah, the Possessed King, though, is a type of mana generation with the two explode. So I like that. Here's a Sunbird. Yep, it kills everything at level 35. It's still good. Level 60 room. Let's see. Uh, let's see how good the Sunbird does at uh, level 60. All right, we don't have like any purple on the board. <laughs> uh, no red either. But there we go. That's what that storm is for. Sunbird. Oh, yeah, it didn't quite kill everything. We'll use the Possessed King to finish him off. But yeah, at level, uh, what was that, level 60? Yeah, level 60. Uh, Sunbird, for me at least, is not going to kill everything one shot at level 60. So that's something to, to uh, consider. You might have to switch out, you know, to a different, different damage troop in there. Yeah, let's go in and check out some of the other troops and see what kind of, uh... Now, I could just do Skatey for the, uh, blue, the Ice Storm. That's a possibility, but at the same time... I kind of like the Madness Storm, because it gives me, if you want to put in a blue troop down here or something, uh, that gives you purple and blue that you can use. So, we do have the Grey King, that could be useful, the Obs Obsidious, we got Infernus, the Arachnean Weaver up there. Uh, this here is going to steal magic, so every time I cast it, plus it's increasing magic on purple, that might be something that I could put in uh, right there and see what kind of damage that does. But again, that's a Mythic Troop. Uh, as for Legendary Troops, you could use something like Medea, because this is doing damage to all. Uh, as well as Queen and Titania is going to be doing damage to all enemies. Uh, oh yeah, we do have Umberwolf as well if you want to use just a solid Dark Storm. So you actually have three Storm options. Uh, we have Skady for the Ice Storm for blue. We have Umberwolf if you want to go straight purple. And then you have Lariza if you want to do the Madness Storm for blue and purple. So that's really great. I like that. Lots of good options there. Uh, this troop I don't use that often, but uh, this is another one you can use for damaged wall enemies. Uh, this here is uh, Vanya Solomorn. It comes from the Silver Necropolis down in the Underworld. Uh, Hexrat. This is another troop that does deals damage to an enemy and all enemies below them. So basically it's uh, damage to all enemies. Vanbarak does a similar thing. Um... Just trying to see what other options you have here that are not mythic troops. I would say those right there that I mentioned are probably some of the best non-mythic uh, troops to use for doing damage. But Will Anisha here, let's... Uh, I mean, I'm still going to be going to be doing battles right now. Very low, low level. But let me try to see if I can get a... Uh, uh, another battle that's the level 60 or higher. Level 85, there we go. Let's try out uh, Will Anisha here on this. See how many casts it takes with our 160. Well, I mean, lots of skull damage here. Let's go ahead and cast this. Generate some mana there for the Will Anisha. Take care of that uh, extra. I oh, gotta gotta love the possessed king with uh, how it pops the board so much. I love that, especially with a storm going. All right, one cast of this it didn't kill them all, but it did steal magic. So every time I cast it from now on out, it's just gonna keep stealing magic and get more powerful. Only thing is, is getting it uh, powered up here. Got to give it more mana. Ah, death marked my possessed king. Well, maybe we could just use the possessed king. Cast this. Almost killed that guy. We use this. And might as well just skull him. 
But yeah, the Will Anisha could work as well. Um, maybe not as quick, though, as something else. The Weaver is always a possibility because if they die, you're going to have uh, an explosion of gems. So, try a battle with that. I always like exploding gems. One of my favorite uh, troop abilities in the game. Uh, and these are all low levels, so this is going to be easy peasy. Easy peasy. Yeah, I'm just glad we have a lot of uh, interesting troops and troop combinations to use this uh, week. So anyway, I'll stop there. Uh, well, let's do this one last room at a level 110 and see how the Weaver... What kind of damage does the Weaver do um, against these guys? It is doing true damage, but uh, 43 true damage isn't enough to kill these, obviously. Um, but I'm wondering how big of a 160% what kind of boost does that actually give it oh it did actually kill that one guy 109 damage use the possessed king and should be able to finish these guys off 106 uh, life there but Yep, nice. So I'll probably use this this troop uh, team here for a while with this event. So uh, that's pretty much it for this week. The only thing uh, I haven't really uh, talked about here yet is the campaign this week. It looks like we've already begun doing some of our tasks. Karakoth Champion, I got to win any battle using a complete Karakoth team, which is annoying because there isn't a whole lot of great troops for that kingdom, and I have to go and build a team for that now and use a complete Karakoth team. Uh, I guess I the fa fastest way to probably do something like that is to just do level 1 explore battles with an entire Karakoth team and just zip through them as quick as possible. But doing those sorts of things makes me feel like I'm, I'm playing... I'm forced to play a certain type of mode in order to get these tasks done that I'm probably not going to enjoy because it feels like I'm being forced to play that in order to accomplish this. So uh, all the, if it wasn't for the artifact power bonuses, I wouldn't even mess with the campaign personally because I feel like it's a complete annoying uh, list of chores to do. But that's just, that's my opinion on it. And I know you guys already know that by now. A lot of you are probably sick of me talking about it. But uh, the campaign is, uh, has become a, quite a big disappointment for me. Um, but that being said, uh, not really much else going on uh, this week. We just have this one event going on. Uh, next event doesn't start for six days. Uh, so that's pretty much it for, uh, this week. I'm just, the only thing I'm going to be focusing on this week is I need to get my PVP tier rank, uh, up there to one, and then I'm going to be, uh, obviously daily trying to do my adventure boards in my dungeons, but, uh, I will be trying to complete my campaign tasks just to get those out of the way. So I might do another live stream, maybe, um, Wednesday morning, uh, or Thursday morning, uh, cause I'm, I'm pretty busy uh, this morning, uh, Monday and, uh, Tuesday morning, I have, uh, quite a few things to do. So probably Wednesday or Thursday, I might do a live event and, uh, might last a couple of, uh, hours. Uh, I'll probably start streaming if I do probably somewhere around, uh, 7 in the morning and probably go to somewhere around like 10. Uh, and that will probably be my stream schedule there. Wednesday or Thursday, maybe even Friday, and I'll just see if, you know, I'll just try to complete the, uh, the campaign tasks live, uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, just maybe chat with you guys, uh, while I'm doing it, because otherwise, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go, <laughs> I'm gonna go crazy trying to do these tasks, uh, with, with, like, nothing to distract me, um, so, yeah, but other than that, uh, this week, and now that this weekend is over, I'm pretty much uh, just, I'm, I'm going to probably shut down the poll that I put up of what game I should cover next here on the channel. 
And uh, it looks like uh, the Clash of Heroes won out by like 2% over Borderlands 3, which is fine for me. Uh, I was okay playing either one of those. Uh, so probably what I will end up doing is doing a, a playthrough of the Clash of Heroes game on this channel starting uh, either towards the end of uh, this, this week or maybe beginning next week, uh, which would be uh, beginning the second week of September maybe. Maybe earlier, we'll see, but I'll start playing some of that. It takes about 20 hours, I think. I looked up on how long to beat uh, Clash of Heroes, and it looked like the average was somewhere around 20 hours. So if I do like one-hour episodes, I don't know if that's too long uh, of a video for each episode or not. Uh, but if I did one one-hour long episodes, it'd turn out to be around 20, maybe 24 episodes to play through that whole uh, game. Um but then after that, uh, I probably will do a Borderlands 3 playthrough since that was the second most voted game. And then once I get done with those two games, uh, which might take several months here to go through those two, then, uh, you know, I can put up another poll and we can see what you guys want me to, uh, would like to see me play here on the channel uh, for your entertainment. So, uh, as always, I appreciate you guys watching my videos and everything. I love you, and I'll catch you on the next video. Later.